The Roman emperors were rulers of the Roman Empire, wielding power over its citizens and military, dating from the granting of the title of Augustus to Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus by the Roman Senate in 27 BCE. Augustus maintained a facade of republican rule, rejecting monarchical titles but calling himself Princeps Senatus first man of the Senate and Princeps Civitatus first citizen of the state. The title of Augustus was conferred on his successors to the imperial position. The style of government instituted by Augustus is called the Principate and continued until reforms by Diocletian. The modern word emperor derives from the title imperator, which was granted by an army to a successful general. During the initial phase of the empire, it still had to be earned by the princeps. The territory under command of the emperor had developed under the period of the Roman Republic as it invaded and occupied most of Europe and portions of northern Africa and western Asia. Under the Republic, regions of the empire were ruled by provincial governors answerable to and authorized by the Senate and people of Rome. During the Republic, the chief magistrates of Rome were two consuls elected each year. Consuls continued to be elected in the imperial period, but their authority was subservient to that of the emperor, and the election was controlled by the emperor. In the late 3rd century, after the crisis of the 3rd century, Diocletian formalized and embellished the recent manner of imperial rule, establishing the so called dominate period of the Roman Empire. This was characterized by the explicit increase of authority in the person of the emperor, and the use of the style Dominus Noster, Our Lord. The rise of powerful barbarian tribes along the borders of the empire and the challenge they posed to defense of far-flung borders and unstable imperial succession led Diocletian to divide the administration geographically of the empire in 286 with a co-Augustus. In 330, Constantine the Great established a second capital in Byzantium, which he renamed Constantinople. For most of the period from 286 to 480, there was more than one recognized senior emperor, with the division usually based in geographic terms. This division was consistently in place after the death of Theodosius I in 395, which historians have dated as the division between the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. However, formally the empire remained a single polity, with separate co-emperors in the separate courts. The fall of the Western Roman Empire, and so the end of a separate list of emperors below, is dated either from the de facto date of 476 when Romulus Augustulus was deposed by Odoacer who became king of Italy, or the de jure date of 480, on the death of Julius Nepos, when Eastern Emperor Zeno ended recognition of a separate Western court. In the period that followed, the empire is usually treated by historians as the Byzantine Empire governed by the Byzantine emperors, although this designation is not used universally, and continues to be a subject of specialist debate today. The line of emperors continued until the death of Constantine XI Palaiologos during the fall of Constantinople in 1453, when the remaining territories were captured by the Ottoman Empire. Legitimacy <inaudible> <inaudible> The emperors listed in this article are those generally agreed to have been legitimate emperors, and who appear in published regnal lists. The word legitimate is used by most authors, but usually without clear definition, perhaps not surprisingly, since the emperorship was itself rather vaguely defined legally. In Augustus' original formulation, the princeps was selected by either the Senate or the people of Rome, but quite quickly the legions became an acknowledged stand-in for the people. A person could be proclaimed as emperor by their troops or by the mob in the street, but in theory needed to be confirmed by the Senate. The coercion that frequently resulted was implied in this formulation. Furthermore, a sitting emperor was empowered to name a successor and take him on as apprentice in government and in that case the Senate had no role to play, although it sometimes did when a successor lacked the power to inhibit bids by rival claimants. By the medieval or Byzantine Period, the very definition of the Senate became vague as well, adding to the complication. Lists of legitimate emperors are therefore partly influenced by the subjective views of those compiling them, and also partly by historical convention. Many of the legitimate emperors listed here acceded to the position by usurpation, and many illegitimate claimants had a legitimate claim to the position. Historically, the following criteria have been used to derive emperor lists. Any individual who undisputedly ruled the whole empire, at some point, is a legitimate emperor 1. Any individual who was nominated as heir or co-emperor by a legitimate emperor 1, and who succeeded to rule in his own right, is a legitimate emperor 2. 
Where there were multiple claimants, and none were legitimate heirs, the claimant accepted by the Roman Senate as emperor is the legitimate emperor three, at least during the Principate, so for instance, Aurelian, though acceding to the throne by usurpation, was the sole and undisputed monarch between 270–275 AD, and thus was a legitimate emperor. Gallienus, though not in control of the whole empire, and plagued by other claimants, was the legitimate heir of the legitimate emperor Valerian. Claudius Gothicus, though acceding illegally, and not in control of the whole empire, was the only claimant accepted by the Senate, and thus, for his reign, was the legitimate emperor. Equally, during the year of the four emperors, all claimants, though not undisputed, were at some point accepted by the Senate and are thus included. Conversely, during the year of the five emperors neither Pescanius Niger nor Clodius Albinus were accepted by the Senate, and are thus not included. There are a few examples where individuals were made co-emperor, but never wielded power in their own right typically the child of an emperor, these emperors are legitimate, but are not included in regnal lists, and in this article are listed together with the senior emperor. <laughs> emperors after 395 After 395, the list of emperors in the East is based on the same general criteria, with the exception that the emperor only had to be in undisputed control of the eastern part of the empire, or be the legitimate heir of the eastern emperor. The situation in the West is more complex. Throughout the final years of the Western Empire 395 the Eastern Emperor was considered the senior emperor, and a Western Emperor was only legitimate if recognized as such by the Eastern Emperor. Furthermore, after 455 the Western Emperor ceased to be a relevant figure and there was sometimes no claimant at all. For the sake of historical completeness, all Western Emperors after 455 are included in this list, even if they were not recognized by the Eastern Empire. Some of these technically illegitimate emperors are included in regnal lists, while others are not. For instance, Romulus Augustulus was technically a usurper who ruled only the Italian peninsula and was never legally recognized. However, he was traditionally considered the last Roman emperor by 18th and 19th century Western scholars and his overthrow by Odoacer used as the marking point between historical epochs, and as such he is usually included in regnal lists. However, modern scholarship has confirmed that Romulus Augustulus's predecessor, Julius Nepos continued to rule as emperor in the other Western holdings and as a figurehead for Odoacer's rule in Italy until Nepos' death in 480. Since the question of what constitutes an emperor can be ambiguous, and dating the fall of the Western Empire. Arbitrary, this list includes details of both figures. The Principate 27 BC–68 AD, Julio-Claudian dynasty 68–96, year of the four emperors and Flavian dynasty 96–192, Nerva Antonin dynasty 193–235, Year of the Five Emperors and Severan dynasty 235–285, Gordian dynasty and crisis of the 3rd century The Dominate 284–364, Tetrarchy and Constantinian dynasty Note, to maintain control and improve administration, various schemes to divide the work of the Roman Emperor by sharing it between individuals were tried after 285. The Tetrarchy Proclaimed by Diocletian in 293 split the empire into two halves each to be ruled separately by two emperors, a senior Augustus, and a junior, Caesar. 364–392, Valentinian dynasty 6. Western emperors 392–455, Theodosian dynasty Note, Theodosius I was the last person to rule both halves of the Roman Empire, splitting it between his sons Arcadius and Honorius on his death. 
Topic 455 to 476 Last Emperors of the Western Empire. Note, the classical Roman Empire is usually said to have ended with the deposition of Romulus Augustulus, with its continuation in the East referred to by modern scholars as the Byzantine Empire. <laughs> Eastern emperors 379–457, Theodosian dynasty Note, Theodosius I was the last person to rule both halves of the Roman Empire, dividing the administration between his sons Arcadius and Honorius on his death. 457–518, Leonid dynasty 518–602, Justinian dynasty 610–695, Heraclean dynasty 695–717, 20 years anarchy 717–802, Isaurian dynasty 802–813, Nikephorian dynasty 820–867, Amorian dynasty 86 Seven one zero five six Macedonian Dynasty topic ten fifty nine to ten eighty one Dukid Dynasty topic ten eighty one to eleven eighty five Comnenid Dynasty topic eleven eighty five to twelve o four Angelid Dynasty topic twelve o four to twelve sixty one Lascarid Dynasty Empire of Nicaea topic twelve sixty one to fourteen fifty three Palaiologan Dynasty topic C also list of condemned Roman emperors list of Roman consuls list of Roman dictators list of Roman usurpers Roman Emperor's Family Tree on Weights and Measures, contains chronology of Roman emperors topic Notes topic References topic Citations topic Sources Ancient Sources Tacitus, The Annals of Imperial Rome, Penguin Classics, Michael Grant Publications Limited, 1971 Reprinted 1985, ISBN 0-14-044060-7 Modern Sources David J. Brees, Brian Dobson Hadrian's Wall 4th Edition, Penguin, 2000, ISBN 0 14 0271821 Clive Carpenter, The Guinness Book of Kings Rulers and Statesmen, Guinness Superlatives Limited, 1978, ISBN 0 900424 46 X Adrian Goldsworthy, The Fall of the West, Phoenix, 2010, ISBN 978 0 7538 2692 8 Min Lee, Editor, LaRousse Pocket Guide Kings and Queens, LaRousse, 1995, ISBN 0 7523 00 32 6 Martha Ross, Rulers and Governments of the World, Volume 1 Earliest Times to 1491 Boker 1978, ISBN 0-85935-021-5 Chris Scar, Brandon Shaw, Chronicle of the Roman Emperors, Thames and Hudson, 1995 Reprinted 2001, ISBN 0-500-05077-5 R. F. Tapsell, Monarchs Rulers Dynasties and Kingdoms of the World, Thames and Hudson, 1981 Reprinted 1987, ISBN 0-500-27337-5 External links Biographies of Roman Emperors. List of the Roman Emperors 27 BC-395 AD Portraits and Fact Files The Roman Law Library by Yves Lassard and Alexander Kopteff. Timeline of Roman Emperors and Empresses <laughs>